these biodegradable like single use face towels. Something I found was that my towels were really breaking me out. Chloe Grace Moretz is somebody that I don't know, but apparently you do because so many different people, including one of our team members, sent this Beauty Secrets Vogue video to me for me to react to. Apparently, Chloe is an acne sister who has gone through Accutane, among other things, and uses some questionable and maybe some good skincare products. So let's analyze, scrutinize, and learn from this routine to see if her skincare choices are acne skin friendly or if you should avoid at all costs because apparently some of these are very costly. We'll, we'll find out. Hi guys, I'm Chloe Grace Moretz. I'm gonna show you my morning skincare routine and then my off-duty beauty look. I like to start with olive oil. And I used to have really bad cystic acne. And I went down the road of using Accutane, which for some people it really works. For me, it never really worked. So I went completely natural. And olive oil was one of the first things I integrated into my face and my cystic acne started clearing up within probably three to four months. Oh my God, first off, Chloe looks like a little lucky shamrock. I love that she has been open about her journey with Accutane and I cringe because this is not something that would necessarily work for all people with acne, but I also cringe for my younger self because this is literally what I did to my own skin as well. When I first went to aesthetic school, it was in 2008, 2009, and we were taught that natural was better. We used brands like Murad and Image, but we also had an MLM sales lady come sell us Young Living Essential Oils. This MLM sales lady told me that these oils would cure my acne, depression, and my grandfather's cancer. So I spent my entire savings, which is like 105 or like $200 on these bullshit <laughs> snake oil oils. All of that being said, there was a lot of misinformation around skincare and skin health. And unfortunately, a little bit of that is still pervasive today. Even five or six years ago, I did videos talking about how I cleared my acne, which included my diet and my stress, but using more natural skincare. Now the natural skincare that I was using did have salicylic acid and ingredients that are acne friendly and acne fighting to actually help with the lesions. But it wasn't until I really started studying biochemistry and anatomy and physiology and working with derms and doctors that I realized, ooh, if we turn and learn our ingredients, we understand what's actually going to work for certain skin conditions. And if she had acne and Accutane didn't work for her, it doesn't work for everyone. There are people such as myself who maybe have one kidney or some people who have liver issues or religious reasons for not going on Accutane, which totally makes sense. But for those who actually need it and are candidates, it can be life-changing and life-saving. But for some people, there are side effects, which is why you need to speak to a doctor, preferably a board-certified dermatologist, about weighing those risks and benefits. Now, when she's talking about olive oil. Oh, I can't stop. This is not the worst thing you could ever do for your skin. Again, if you're putting it on and rinsing it off, like dissolves like in chemistry. So oil, such as olive oil, will dissolve things like the oil that's in the skin that acne bacteria eats and feeds off of. But this is not great for acne prone skin. I would recommend a double cleanse and depending on what she was using before the olive oil, yes, this may have helped her. And again, as the bitch who literally used the Costco Kirkland shampoo and conditioner on my face, because I didn't know better among many other questionable substances because of Megan. Megan, love you, Megan. <laughs> I just, I'm in so much pain because natural doesn't mean better. And while olive oil is better than rubbing your face with shampoo and conditioner and uh, urine, it's it's not a great acne opportunity, okay? There are some other things that I would, oh my God, that I would much rather recommend. By the way, if you want some acne friendly oil cleansers that are inexpensive, but not infringing upon Jennifer Lopez new trademark, apparently, I have left all of my budget recommendations in the description for you. I use these biodegradable, like single use face towels. Something I found was that my towels were really breaking me out. So no matter what I did, I could never get rid of these like little pimples all over my cheeks. And I found out that they were both my towels and my pillowcases. Interesting about the towels and the pillowcases. Now, this is where we get into the science and the biology of our beauty, specifically about acne. Remember that acne is caused by a bacteria, Propionibacterium acnes or Cutibacterium acnes, and it lives inside of our skin in an anaerobic environment. An meaning not or without, and aerobic, think of aerobic exercise or oxygen. So this bacteria lives in a no oxygen environment. Now, when she is saying that her 
pillowcases or her towels were causing acne. There's no such thing as pillowcases or towels causing acne because to cause acne, you would have to cause the bacteria to grow, right? You would have to cause the skin to create more oil or clog it in some way. And even I used to believe this when I was 15 until I learned actually from Dr. Kate Rodan in Oakland, California, that, you know, acne bacteria doesn't fall off your face, settle into your pillowcase and then jump back onto your skin. If it comes into contact with oxygen, it dies. That's why benzoyl peroxide is a great opportunity. However, for those who do have like oily hair or, you know, issues with irritation and sensitivity, using a rough towel or a rough pillowcase could irritate the skin and it could cause lesions that look like acne or exasperate acne, but it doesn't actually cause acne. If you are struggling with acne, towels and pillowcases should not be your first focus. The first focus should be things such as a skincare routine that actually works for you, but that's simple with effective active ingredients such as these four. And then maybe looking at your stress or your hormones or your diet as other steps outside of hygiene and skincare. From there, yes, let's look at things like laundry detergents or like clothing or towels, etc. I did find that my body broke out with certain laundry detergents. But for her, if this is actually residual acne, it's fine to change out your towels and pillowcases. It's a great thing to do. But I would say let's focus on a, a different cleanser first before we, you know, go go buy new bed sheets. I'm gonna put makeup on. Um, I'm gonna use another cleanser and this is a Japanese rice brand cleanser. I get this from the Natural Face Bible. She's been using it a lot on Instagram. So it comes in a powder form. I'll try to show you it. You then add a little bit of water to this and I'll show you the paste that it turns into. This is what it looks like. This paste actually looks really fun. This appears to be rice bran, which might be a little bit gritty. That's great as an exfoliator and exfoliators are great for acne. But um, I'm curious if she only does this when she's applying makeup or all the time. We also have to touch on that face towelette. When I look at the description, apparently she's using the Clean Skin Club face towelettes. I hate makeup wipes. They should not be used on a regular basis if they are your only step, unless you are in an emergency situation. Maybe the power went out because you live in a natural disaster area or you're traveling or at a festival, then it's great. But makeup wipes should not be a regular part of a routine unless somebody has a mobility condition or issue that they want to use a makeup wipe for. Now, that being said, out of all of the horrendous, terrible, awful makeup wipes out there, the Clean Skin Club ones are ones that I actually recommend because yes, they are biodegradable. Yes, they actually are fragrance-free. They are more nourishing to skin. They don't have a bunch of irritants that regular makeup wipes do. I mean, we just hit it with the olive oil, the makeup wipe, and now like a scrubby rice thing. I mean, this is ouch. I wouldn't recommend this for someone who's actively breaking out, but her skin is glowing. And I'm really happy to hear that this rice thing looks like it's working for her. Rice does have beta glucans in it. They can hold on to water and moisture. They can be very nourishing to the skin. And as long as this isn't scratching her skin, it actually sounds like a very inexpensive and probably eco-friendly way to go about things, which I actually like to see, even though it took us two and a half steps to get here. I use a dry towel. And if anybody's watched the holiday, I'll kind of feel like Mr. Napkinhead. I'm Mr. Napkinhead. <laughs> it's better when Jude Law does it for like a multitude of reasons, but. This, it is a grapefruit stellar renewal and it's basically just a serum. <laughs> grapefruit stellar renewal serum. <laughs> what is this? Uh. I do like that this actually looks like a more indie brand. I guess it's called Living Liberations. It is $50, which is quite expensive for this. What is it, an oil serum? It says it's made for acne prone skin on Amazon, but grapefruit can have some benefits such as antioxidant properties and brightening properties. However, for me especially, I really cringe because my skin is more sensitive to citrus. And I think that that's something that my skin developed over time. Now, when we look at the ingredients here, it does have aloe vera, rose hips, jojoba, Jojoba herbal infusions. I don't know if that's the same as jojoba oil or not, but those first couple of ingredients actually aren't terrible. When she read the name of this, I was thinking, oh my God, like Trisha Paytas whipping up questionable skincare like in a back room. <laughs> this actually doesn't look terrible. It looks like there's calendula, comfrey, again, grapefruit, which isn't great for sensitive skinned people. Sea buckthorn is really good. Carrot, lemon. I wouldn't do the lemon. There's tea tree, antioxidants. This isn't the worst of the worst. I definitely would not pay $50 for this at all. And I also don't really understand what this series is trying to do. They say it's acne prone skin. Like what, like what, what is going on? If you actually have active acne, I would recommend a serum with again, some of these main ingredients. And
And if you are looking for acne favorites, if you open up the description box, I've always listed those there for you, as well as other things such as my favorite sunscreens and my favorite budget buys. The Ordinary has some really good and inexpensive serums, especially such as their salicylic acid, which comes in a water or oil form. Be Minimalist also has a great salicylic acid. And the Inky List has some great retinoids. Acne Free has a wonderful adapting gel. And all of these products are like under 20, maybe $30. Whereas this is 50. And I, I don't know what this serum is doing for skin. I'm glad that she likes it. It's really cool to see a celebrity using a small indie brand. This isn't something I would recommend to someone who's actively breaking out with acne. And if you have acne and sensitive skin, sensitive skin people steer clear of this. Just eat the grapefruit. Eat the grapefruit, babe. Just don't. No. Skin type, because of Accutane, it's like super dry. What I found is that oil begets oil in a lot of ways. So when I started using olive oil, um, it really made my skin type more neutral. My next serum thing is an oil. It's called CoQ10. And what I found is it replenishes the barrier in my skin so my skin can naturally defend itself and not get so irritated. Wow, I actually love what she's saying here. When she's talking about oil making her skin less oily, remember, like dissolves like. So if you use an oil cleanser, I wouldn't recommend olive oil, but if you use an oil cleanser and rinse it off, you're actually pulling oil out of the skin, which can help. She mentioned Accutane as well. Yes, most people who go through Accutane do end up very dry. And fun fact, Accutane is actually used for other reasons as well, such as an oily scalp or other conditions. It's basically just a super huge dose of oral vitamin A, basically a retinoid. And again, for some people it's great, for other other people, not so much. But that's why you talk to your doctor. We've done a video on a skincare routine for post-Accutane care. Always speak to your dermatologist or doctor first. But when it comes to the things that she might want to consider using, I would approach her skin if she were coming to me as a dry skin plus acne. And um, again, if she says she's sensitive, I wouldn't use a lot of these things. This is a Royal Rose CoQ10 Serum. CoQ10 is amazing. It's from the same brand Living Libations, Libations? Libations. I thought it was Liberations. Dyslexia has striked again. Stricken? Striked? Quack. <laughs> Oh, this is $90. Okay, wow. You know, Dermalogica has a really good retinoid that's a little less expensive. I just, what, when Dermalogica exists, why, why, why this? The ingredients in here are rosehip seed oil, jojoba seed oil, CoQ10, AKA coenzyme Q10. We do have a whole bunch of plant extracts, ylang ylang, ooh, lemon. Again, I don't love this for acne prone skin. This seems like a decent antioxidant oil if you want something that will protect you from the sun. But again, if she's sensitive, why are we going in with lemon, literal citrus, linalool, yet ylang ylang, like way, 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 way. The Inky List has a CoQ10 serum. It is much less expensive and works excellently as well. I know that she's going for like the natural stuff. Just stop. <laughs> Juice Beauty. They have this natural branding and they actually create acne products that are wonderful. Bloom Skincare. Acne friendly. They do the natural branding. Biosance. I don't know if they really call themselves, you know, acne friendly, but they have some stuff that is skin barrier supportive for dry skin types. Why are we doing this? Oh well. She looks happy. <laughs> It honestly just took years of trial and error in trying to figure out what I can do and what I can't do. And it also matters your environment. I live in Los Angeles, not a lot of humidity. So when I go back to Georgia, where I'm from, I break out like crazy because my skin is like, what? Hydration from the air? What is this? <laughs> my next product that I use, SK2's Miracle Water. This is super cool. It kind of like smells like sake when you use it. We love sake, we love a Japanese cultural moment, but SK2 for acne? The facial treatment essence, oh my God doing this. If you have a lot of money, which many celebrities do, and if you want to spend it on this for $235, okay, fine. I know some derms and doctors love it. Again, it's antioxidant skin support. Even I reviewed this product years ago before I became cruelty free. But for someone who's acne prone, why are we doing this? Why? Maybe she's using this as a hydrating serum, in which case, okay. I would definitely recommend something like the Pyongkang Yule, the Papa recipe. Neither of those are gonna help with acne either, but okay. You know which one is great? Peach slices. The peach slices is like a K-beauty option, you know, that is actually for acne prone skin. I would love to acne friendly and budgify this skincare routine because I would not recommend this for the majority of people out there who are struggling with their skin. I'm glad that she likes it. I am just having a financial anxiety moment based on other people's skincare choices. By like face training and doing using a face roller. I started doing this and it just really helped with lymphatic drainage. 
sometimes when I'm really stressed out, I'll be like on my phone just <laughs> doing it kind of aggressively. And my friends will be like, are, are you okay? <laughs> You're kind of going to town with your roller. Take it and bring it down into your neck. As someone who can also be aggressive and is a recovered picker, I will say the facial rollers can be fun. This is great. This isn't gonna cure acne. You know, there's nothing in here that's going to dramatically reshape your face or, you know, snatch your jawline. But for gentle lymphatic drainage, for penetration of product into skin, for circulation, which literally gets blood, different immune cells and your body's natural healing process to the skin, freaking excellent. This is wonderful. Just don't spend a hundred and five hundred and two hundred dollars on this, especially these little rollers. If you are buying gua sha stones, there's actually a lot of cultural relevance and history to these. And that's when I think it makes sense to purchase to actually support someone who is paying tribute to the actual culture that this comes from. Because did you know that gua sha is actually a scraping technique and the tools are actually called gua sha stones. They've been around for thousands upon thousands of years in ancient Chinese medicine. And they were like a precursor to acupuncture. A lot of people don't know that. And I feel like a lot of gua sha has been really consumerismed, greenwashed, kind of whitewashed and it's kind of sad. And as I learn more about that, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to be making stone purchases, I don't want to buy them from Miranda Kerr, as beautiful as she is and as much as we love her. Do not charge me $50 for a rose quartz gua sha stone and then tell me that it's lymphatic drainage when it's literally not even meant to do that. So thank you for coming to my culturally relevant TED talk. I hope you enjoyed. This is a Youth of the People uh, eye cream. It has a little bit of goji stem cell, uh, ceramides, and hyaluronic acid, and some vitamin C. I worked with Emilio Estevez in The Guardian on my very first product I ever did, and I was five years old. And he looked at me and he was like, if I can give you any advice, it's to always use eye cream. And then I grew up, and I'm not five anymore, I'm 25. And you know what, Emilio, you see this? You're completely correct. <laughs> I don't know who Emilio is, but it sounds like interesting advice. I understand the intent. I understand the intention, but you know, eye creams are overpriced moisturizers. There are a few that are good. It depends on what you're looking to do because she's looking for something that works under makeup. She's going to be applying makeup today. It makes sense to use an eye cream that doesn't pill or ball up. I don't know about this one from youth to the people, but again, most eye creams are overpriced moisturizers. 90% of them are trash in my personal opinion. If you have the money, spend it. But why when you could literally support the skin of the eye with things like retinoids, with things like ceramides, with things that the rest of your face needs. When she's talking about this Youth to the People eye cream, look at the eye cream, see what's in the eye cream. Youth to the People is a pretty good brand. They do this natural greenwashing. I need to dig into the history of Youth to the People. I bet for $48 for this tiny little thing. No, they have such good face products. They have this Air Whip face moisturizer that's really good. Use that under your eyes. Why? Why? This does have vitamin C, so it will actually help to brighten the under eyes. If you do have darkness or discoloration, I could see this being helpful. The Goji stem cells, they're saying it removes fine lines and wrinkles. I don't know about that. Vegan hyaluronic acid and ceramides, definitely really good. But again, you could use this all over the face. There are some different seed oils. This is not bad. I love the ceramides in here. Again, not bad, but make this a facial moisturizer. It's got shea butter in it. So it's also, it's a little bit thicker or so it seems. Put it on as a moisturizer, babes. Put it out. <sighs> and thank you. I use this 100% pure coffee bean caffeine eye cream. She likes them, but why are we using two eye creams? Again, if you have to use two eye creams in a routine, maybe your eye cream is not working. She seems like a wonderful and brilliant person, so I'm wondering why she feels the need to do this. The 100% pure caffeine, caffeine eye cream is a good brand. They do this natural branding too, but they have caffeine, so this could help with puffiness. But maybe what that's kind of telling me is, okay, the use to the people is maybe working on the darkness or discoloration, and then this one is working on the depuffing. The way I would do that is literally just get a patch that goes under the eyes that holds them up to deal with the puffiness and then a little bit of vitamin C for the brightening. Pacifica has one. We shopped for Fashion by Allie. We got her a travel friendly routine for under $45 at Ulta. You can check that out on Instagram. But I found these eye patches from Pacifica. Use that instead of this. Use the Wander Beauty ones. That will help so much more and you'd be saving so much money because look, this is 29 plus 49 bucks. Ouch. It doesn't look bad, you know, but this caffeine is basically an antioxidant and a vasoconstrictor. It's a little bit of redness. Yeah, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of constriction of the under eye area. I just, Beauty of Josen Retinol Eye Cream, just use that. That's That'll take care of all of these same things for a fraction of the price. Badum dashoom, done. 
even if I like have a really fun night out, you know, and maybe I'm having some drinks with my friends and I will come home and I will do a full skincare routine. I have like a whole nighttime beauty routine that no one's gonna stand in the way of. And we're gonna lock in all those oils and serums. It's important that you do serums, then oils, then moisturizer. Um, wait, what? Uh, she's saying to use serums, then oils, then moisturizers. But think about what oils do. Oils are a kind of moisturizer because moisturizers basically seal things in. Hydrators are things that have water. A moisturizer can have water, usually they do, and it can be a hydrator, but usually you wanna use your hydrators first, then your oils. So depending on the oil, again, your serum could be your hydrator and then you're locking it in, but I would actually recommend putting your oil on after your moisturizer, unless it is a treatment oil. And the reason why is because if that moisturizer has antioxidants, if it has, you know, really good hydrating ingredients like water, which most of them do, how is that water going to get through that oil? It's not going to be able to. And that oil, you know, kind of creates a seal on things. So I would do the moisturizer and then the oil, unless it's a treatment oil. I like to use the cleanse consistency complete methodology. So you can screenshot this if you'd like to look at it and learn from this later. Oils, unless they're treatment one, they're normally last or very first to be used in a double cleansing routine. One more moisturizer that I apply. This is Wellida uh, Skin Food. It has some calendula in it. Some people, fair warning, if you have really reactive skin, you probably will not be able to handle calendula. I love that she prefaces this. Even though she mentioned sensitivity before, maybe she's not as sensitive. What are these products? Again, the, well, is it Wellendula or Welda? This is the original ultra rich cream. It's actually quite inexpensive and it's got good ingredients. Again, there's nothing in here that's going to actively fight acne. That makes me wonder, you know, is this why she still has some little minor breakouts or are they, you know, fungal acne, which isn't really acne, but pterosperm folliculitis. Does she have milia on her skin that's not going away? That's that's why it's important to get it diagnosed and treated by a derm, right? But when we look here, we have sunflower oil, different almond oils, beeswax, uh, rosemary. Again, this shows us like this is a moisturizer with oils in it. So why would we put on oils that are blocking things like the chamomile flower extract and the water in here? And then we have oils in this that might soak into the skin, but we're just basically blocking this from absorbing into the skin because we've already applied, I think she said an oil. What was the oil that she used? It actually didn't say. Lancer The Method Nourish something or other? I've actually never heard of this brand. Nourish Normal Combination Skin. What is this for $130? That sounds expensive. This looks anti-aging. We're gonna have to deep dive. Antioxidants are great. Hyaluronic acid is great. Hexapeptide 48 is great, but none of these should cost $130. Nourishing avocado oil. Okay, again, really good, but why is it this expensive? If you wanna spend a ton of money on like a firming polypeptide serum, this one, this is expensive, but use this. Again, I just, I'm, I'm just not understanding. There are things that if you want to spend money on, you totally can. This doesn't look horrible, but again, for her skin, this has avocado, some grape. This looks more like an anti-aging and firming thing. And again, when I compare it to this, I would recommend this instead. And then I think what's perplexing me here is that just like none of this is great for treating acne, but none of this is even like acne supportive. You know, you can kind of support the skin barrier with some of these things, which maybe is acne supportive, but this has perfume, limonene. One of these things just does not belong. So my last step before I put on my makeup is I use uh, Barbara Sturm's Sun Drops. So now we'll move on to... Whoa! First off, I am so happy that she's using a sunscreen. But first, I didn't even know that Dr. Barbara Sturm had sun drops. And because Dr. Barbara Sturm is like the CEO of $300 basic hyaluronic acid, I'm a little worried about the price. I don't think that a lot of her products are terrible. I think she's a brilliant woman. I just don't agree with a lot of the prices of her products and the actual ingredients in them. Let's see what this says at Sephora. $150 for an SPF 50? And the reviews are not so good. What is going on here? Her. Again, this has hyaluronic acid. Great. I love that it has green tea, but there are a lot of K-beauty brands that have green tea or similar things as well as an SPF 50. Uh, this is a chemical sunscreen, so I'm sure it blends in very, very nicely. Again, we look at the ingredients. These are basic as fuck. This is a basic as fuck sunscreen with green tea for $150. When K-beauty exists with green tea and SPF 50 with the Wow! You know what? Good for you, Dr. Barbara Sturm. She is making money. She is making bank. Wow. 
For those who are actually struggling with their skin, uh, no. If you got a ton of money and you want some expensive sunscreen because you like luxury products, okay. But for the majority of us who are struggling with acne and on a budget, <laughs> no, K-Beauty. This does have arginine, which is an amino acid, very supportive and nourishing to the skin. It does have beta-glucans, hydrating, panthenol, vitamin B5, which also helps with sebum control. But like, none of this is revolutionary and I can find literally all of these exact same ingredients in K-Beauty. Oh man, my wallet pain for 16 year old me who had acne and thought that natural was better and spent every single paycheck at a Sephora trying to buy my way to clear skin and therefore happiness and less insecurity and not wanting to like unalive myself every day. Like I went through some shit, okay? We're not gonna talk about that right now. That's for therapy, that's for therapy. That's for 10 years of therapy. Ah, we're good. All of that being said, we could absolutely acne and debudgify this or rebudgify this routine. She's a brilliant, beautiful, lucky shamrock of a person. I want to get to know her and what she do, but I also wish that we could tweak a couple of things here because I'm not seeing any really acne friendly ingredients. Again, here's your cheat sheet. Some of the things you want to look for are benzyl peroxide, which kills the acne bacteria, salicylic acid, which exfoliates the skin, kills the bacteria, and helps to dissolve the oil. Sulfur, which really helps to dry out pimples and retinoids, which helps your skin build back better and helps with scarring as well as active acne. We have spoken about so many different videos about acne products that are worth it. And if you want one for my favorite budget options for acne, please let me know because you can spend $150 on a sunscreen if you really want to. But if you are struggling with acne and your skin, literally when the minimalist and the ordinary and the inky list and K-beauty exists, we don't have to. And so if you are on a budget, and struggling with your skin. Watch the celebrities for their beautiful movies and their wonderful personalities and who they are, but do not copy their skincare routines, okay? Okay, babies, I love you. I am going to go live. What am I gonna go do? I'm gonna go live. I'm just I'm gonna go live today, okay? I love you. I hope that you reapply your SPF. I'm hoping that you didn't spend $150 on it. Hope you're staying hydrated and um, let me know if you want a budget acne friendly favorites video. All of my recommendations will be in the description and um, yeah, I can't wait to see you tomorrow in the next one. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.